Hey, good morning everybody out there in YouTube land. Bob, KK4DIV, and today I got my new antenna. We're gonna take it down here to Kinsall Park. We're gonna set it all up. We're gonna see what it's all about, give you my thoughts on it, and we're gonna try to log a few contacts on what seems to be the most popular digital mode, FT8. Folks, we're down here at Kinsall Park. Got the beautiful uh, bay here behind me. And, um, you know, this park's gone through a lot since the hurricane. Uh, our beautiful grass field is now kind of a clay field. But uh, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> we're going to get this thing set up today. Uh, so what we have here is we've got the, the soda beans. Uh, Band Hopper 3 Plus. Uh, this is 20 meters, 30 meters, and 40 meters. Um, that's usually where I kind of stay. I hang out on those three bands, so I figured this would be the one I'd be uh, get the most use out of. So what we've got here is we have the antenna, as you can see here. Um, it's got uh, it's a dipole antenna. It's a link dipole, uh, so you can uh, link the different pieces together uh to get the different bands uh, and i'll show you how that works once we get it all set up a lot of you may have already seen this antenna and uh, i got it because well i saw a friend here in town in 4k gl has one and uh i kind of kind of fell in love with it it's a neat antenna so uh yeah i wanted something that is going to be a little bit more uh, resonant i guess you could say uh, something that's going to be a better performer uh, you know, I've got the uh, Wolf River Coil. I've got one right here on my truck, actually, but I've got another one I use for portable ops. And uh, it's great. It's a nice antenna. It's ultra portable. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is the counterpoise requirements. You've got to have uh, at least one counterpoise. I have three. Uh, but that becomes a trip hazard, and it's still not a dipole. Uh, the other antenna I use for portable is the uh, Mag Loop. The, uh, uh, chameleon F loop antenna that's a mag loop that's the first generation F loop um, it's a great antenna also I like it because it's just a small footprint uh, it doesn't require any counterpoise wires uh, but again it's not a dipole and you know I, I just believe you can't beat a dipole for a good uh, radio especially if you're running QRP levels because um, you're going to need the best antenna you can possibly get. Uh, you need to just maximize your chances when you're just running 5 watts. So we're going to get this all set up today. This is my first attempt at setting it up, so I really know nothing about setting this antenna up. Um, but we're going to get it all set up. Uh, a couple things I got. Um, I've got the guying kit uh, that goes along with this. I'm not sure if I'm going to use this because... Uh, here's another thing I stole from uh, N4KGL uh, is the uh, using a piece of angle, angle iron uh, to uh, drive into the ground to support the antenna mast. And for a mast, I also have the soda beams. Uh, this is the, uh, uh, the, what is this, the 10 meter soda beams uh, telescoping mast. And we've got some of these... Uh, orange twisty ties that we're going to uh, wrap it up and kind of mount it to the side of this and have that driven into the ground. So I may not need the counterpoise, um, but I do have it so that um, if I ever need it, I can use it. But we're going to get all this set up, so uh, bear with me, guys. Like I said, this is my first time setting it up. And uh, we're gonna have a little fun.
All right, so I've got the mast fully extended and they recommend not going all the way to the top of the mast with the band hopper uh, due to excessive bending of the mast. You could damage it or break it. So I don't have it all the way to the top. I have it most of the way to the top. Uh, if it were windy, I might have it lower, but uh, the wind's pretty calm today. But uh, we've got the mast fully extended. So this is how you tune the antenna for the different bands. Uh, you just link these uh, little alligator clips together uh, to extend the length of the antenna. And uh, you can change it from 20 to 30 to 40 meters just by linking uh, the two sets of alligator clips on either length on either side of the dipole. So pretty, uh, pretty cool setup with that. And here's how I have the uh, uh, mast linked to the uh, angle iron. This is actually angle aluminum. Uh, Greg uses angle iron in 4K GL. That's where I got the idea. Um, not original. I got to give credit where credit is due. And uh, I decided to go with aluminum because it's lighter weight. So that's, uh, that's the reason for the difference there. I think the aluminum was more expensive, uh, but it's not going to rust. Don't have to worry about that. And it's a uh, lighter weight. So if I had to carry it very far, uh, I always want to minimize uh, the weight in my, uh, in my pack. So there you go. So now I'm going to get the, uh, the ends tacked down and we'll get the uh, antenna hooked to the radio and we'll see if we can't log a couple contacts. All right, there we go. We just got it tacked down. It comes, uh, the uh, guy wire kit comes with a few uh, tent stakes. So I just use a couple of those to tack it down. And you can see the mast has a little bend to it, but I don't believe that's going to be too bad. Like I said, in a higher wind, I might uh, bring the antenna down a bit to, man to minimize uh, the bending so I don't damage the mast. Uh, that's what they recommend. They recommend not to go over 20 feet with the band hopper. And I'm probably a little higher than that, honestly. But if I break it, <laughs> it's going to be on me. All right, let's get this thing hooked up. I will say that this Soda Beams does come with this nice blue bag. Uh, it's a fairly thick a nylon canvas type bag um, seems to be good quality it is large enough to store uh, the guy kit as well as the antenna in there uh, so that's fantastic uh, it also came with this little uh, brief instructions here um, on how to set up the band hopper all right so this is a little bit of the instructions for the soda beams band hopper 3 plus uh, 20, 30, 40 meter. Uh, this is the uh, complete package. It says every band hopper is a complete system including a resonant antenna. Uh, no automatic tuner required. Uh, it has some uh, feeder wire that is um, BNC terminated. Uh, guys for a telescoping pole. Now uh, it does, like I said, not recommended for the antenna height to exceed six meters or about 20 feet. Uh, you got three wire winders for tangle free operating, three pegs for the guys, and one stylish bag to keep it all together. Now I will say this about the, uh, the guy wire. It is one continuous length of uh, rope, uh, so you're going to have to cut it yourself. I uh, was going to set up the guys, uh, but it's going to require a little bit more work, and I didn't want to do that today. And on the back of this, it does give you some brief instructions on how to uh, how to set it all up. I didn't read them. <laughs> Who reads instructions? All right. So we've already got the radio on here. We're on uh, 20 meters. So it sounds like a, a bunch of people on there for FT8. And let's uh, get the computer on. We'll see if we can't log. I'm looking for 10 contacts. Let's talk about this radio a minute. This 
is the recent 978 or 928 928 yeah this is the 928 uh, this is like 918 except it has a battery in it so you all know I bought the 918 and I uh, was playing around with it and updated the firmware and all of that stuff uh, had been having a little bit of fun with it but I wanted something with an internal battery and I searched around and I found this basically it's the exact same radio the case is a little bit deeper uh, but it does have an internal battery so that's the uh, recent 918 uh, fun little rig uh, and I do like the fact that it interfaces straight to the computer without having to work with a signal link or anything like that all right so we're going to uh, see if I can find an empty spot maybe I'll just answer some CQs the band for FT8 looks pretty full let's see make sure we're on digital here we're transmitting I found an empty spot on the band and um, SWR looks good looks like about a 1.1 1.2 to 1 on the uh, FT8 frequency of 14074 and let's just see uh, what happens I just got a buzz on my phone and after one call I have been picked up on um, PSK reporter uh, by AF7KR picked me up uh, just running five watts here so let's see uh, let's see what we got all right, well, that was a success with November 2 Foxtrot Bravo Victor. And um, looks like we're calling CQ again and hope that we will get another station to come back to me. Like I said, my goal here was to get set up and log 10 contacts uh, using FT8 before I pack it all back up. So uh, we got one down. And nine more to go. Log five contacts, and I just realized uh, that I was running two watts out of the radio. <laughs> so that's uh, that's not too shabby. So I bumped it up to five watts, and we're going to run it a little bit here. I don't want to run it too long at five watts, um, simply because this radio whew, is hot. All right, I let this thing cool down a little bit. Like I said, it was getting pretty warm. And I went ahead and changed the bands. I uh, switched it to 30 meters, and it was pretty quiet. So I went ahead and uh, connected both uh, links, and we're now on 40 meters. There's a few uh, stations on 40 meters. So we're going to see if we can't log the other five contacts here on 40 meters before I pack it up and head back to the house. All right, we're having some luck here on 40 meters. I got NA4NA. And we've got uh, B9 or K9 Bravo Foxtrot Golf. And another station was calling me in there, uh, November Sierra 2 Romeo. So uh, we're doing pretty good on 40 meters. The bands aren't as crowded. And honestly, I find I have better luck if the bands aren't real crowded on FT8 because uh, a lot of times uh, my little... Uh, 5 watt QRP station uh, just uh, just gets covered up if the bands are too crowded and I'm not very lucky so 40 doesn't have a whole lot of people on there and uh, we seem to be doing a little bit better all right and here's contact QSO number 10 WB5 Oscar Zulu Alpha Wow this was so much easier on 40 meters. Radio is not as hot, but it was sitting in the sun earlier and I moved it back towards the uh, inside of the bed under the canopy here. Uh, it's not as hot. I think the sun was causing it to heat up a little bit as well. Um, but, um, you know, when you're running FT8, uh, I have noticed this little radio does get kind of warm. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a pretty high duty cycle uh, it's just sitting there transmitting for 15 seconds at a time and 
uh, only 15 seconds to cool down, it's, it's building up quite a bit of heat. All right, and I got the 73. I've been taking pictures of each one of these contacts here, um, just because. There we go. All right, well, a success. Uh, my plan was to come out, uh, set up this antenna for the first time, uh, which was a success, got that taken care of, and then to get on FT8 and log 10 contacts. I uh, didn't expect it to take this long, but you know, on 20 meters, like I said, the band was really crowded. And uh, sometimes when you get to a band that's not so crowded, especially if you're operating QRP, it's just uh, easier to make the uh, QSO. Uh, people can hear you a little bit better is, uh, is what I think's happening. Uh, but I tell you what, man, this is a fun hobby. I uh, had a, it's always a conversation starter. People always walk up and ask you, hey, what are you doing? Well, it's ham radio. I had a guy uh, walk up, ask, uh, I think I've talked to him out here before, but he asked if I was, uh, if anybody was out there. And I said, there sure is. And uh, we talked a little bit about it and uh, the licensing requirements and all of that. So uh, yeah, it's uh, it's fun not only to get out, but uh, interact with the people as well. Cause like I said, it's always a conversation starter and it's fun to uh, just uh, tell people what you're doing. Sometimes they look at you like you're a little bit crazy, <laughs> uh, but sometimes you have some genuinely curious people that, uh, that actually are interested in what you're doing, and that's what I enjoy. Uh, but we're gonna get everything packed up here and, um, and get heading back to the house. So uh, yeah, I'll be right back. All right, there it is, all packed back up. The Soda Beams Band, hop, band Hopper 3 for 20, 30, and 40 meters. The guying kit and the mast. I think that's a pretty small package for a pretty capable antenna. All right, folks, well, that was the Soda Beams Band Hopper, um, band hopper 3 for 20, 30, and 40 meters. Um, this is it in this little bag. I think it's a great little antenna. I'm really impressed with it. I like it a lot. Uh, yeah, I think it's a little bit more work to get it set up uh, versus like the F-loop antenna or something. It takes a little bit more time to get set up. Uh, but man, I'm telling you, when you've got that uh, 10 meter uh, telescoping travel pole by Soda Beams and you can get that thing up 20, uh, 20 feet in the air, something like that, uh, that's going to outperform uh, that, uh, that mag loop going to outperform the uh, the Wolf River coil with the telescoping whip. And don't get me wrong, like I said, I love those antennas, but I think nothing beats, nothing beats a dipole. So that's it guys, the Soda Beams antenna. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in and watching today and joining me on my little adventure out to the park. And uh, once things cool down, I'm going to start getting back into the mode of making more videos. Sorry I haven't been around in a while, but you know, here in Florida, it's hot, and I uh, just haven't felt like getting out and putting up with the heat. So uh, uh, once things cool down, I'm gonna get back into the habit of trying to produce a video about uh, once a week, maybe every once every couple weeks. So uh, thanks everybody for watching, and until next time, 73, this is Bob, KK4DIV. Bye-bye. Gosh, son of a...